Hello everybody and welcome back to Nifty 50 Photographers. In today's video we're going to talk about night photography, specifically how to create light trails. Now I think this is a great subject for beginners and I'll talk you through all the basics you need to know, your camera settings, what kind of location to go to and how to get the best shot. So for my video today I've chosen to come to a bridge overlooking a road so let me give you a few tips to use when you're doing your night photography. Number one, bring yourself a head torch and keep your hands free and you can see what's going on when it gets dark. Number two, choose your time of day carefully. If I move around, you can probably see that the sun is just setting behind me. And uh, I like to get here while it's still daylight so I can suss out my location and see where I want to set up. Number three, it's a good idea to come just at the blue hour if you can. Now that's literally just after sunset. It's currently February in the UK when I'm making this video. The blue hour is actually very short, it's only about 20 minutes. But once it goes from the blue hour to dark, you can still take your shot, so don't worry. Now, the other thing is, choose a location that's got some elevation. I'll show you where I am now. So we're on a, uh, actually it's a, it's a bridge built for pedestrians and animals over a busy highway and you can see all the traffic running underneath me. Now the reason I've chosen this bridge is there's a nice curve that leads you into the frame and that's going to be more interesting from a composition point of view. There's not too much around it but I don't live in a very built-up area. If you've got a built-up area with lots of highways crossing over one another and you can get up on an elevated bridge I'll make your shots really interesting. Now the other thing to do as well as timing is try and choose a fairly busy time of day because you want lots of activity to create those long light trails. And uh, just behind me as well you can see there's actually a train bridge and so I've got some other options might be able to catch a train going over as I'm filming uh, cars underneath and create some crisscross light trails. Might be something fun to try but it's going to be a bit hit and miss and I can look up the train timetables to give myself some clues. But let's talk about camera settings. First of all you're going to need your camera on a tripod because one of the key things for this is you're going to need a long exposure. I'd recommend you start with a shutter time something like 10 seconds. What you can do if you get uh, to your location you can actually time how long it takes a car to get right through the scene and that's what you really want in fact you might want several cars to build up the density of the light trail if you're using a wide angle lens find that your trails are much narrower and thinner if you go to a telephoto they'll be thick so think about that in terms of your composition what you would prefer if you want those really thick trails then go for a longer focal length you know, maybe use a prime lens of 100 millimeters or something like that. But they will dominate your scene much more. If you've got a more interesting scene, maybe with lots of lit up buildings, if you're in an urban cityscape, something like that, you might prefer a wider angle lens to get more of the surrounding scene. And having that long exposure time will also help to bring up the surrounding scene. So that's the first thing. The next thing, your aperture. You know, it's going to be determined a little bit by um, how uh, long you need that shutter speed but start with something like f8 if you need to go narrower to get those longer shutter times then uh, yeah, that's what you've got to do keep your ISO as low as possible now the other thing you need to do is trigger your camera without any shake so either set a self delay timer what I'm going to use today actually is uh, I'm going to use the remote on my mobile because actually I want to time the shutter to come on just as a car comes uh, into my scene or just before it does and uh, it's a little bit easier to do if you've got a remote than it is to, to do it with a shutter delay timer and that's it really the rest of it is really about taking your scene making sure you've got your composition nice I've got a nice sweeping curve in my composition and uh, just practice. If you find your uh, trails aren't dense enough then you're going to have to increase that uh, shutter speed 
for a longer time. So actually really slow it down so that you've got a longer time. One other thing you might find it easier to do if your camera is struggling to focus in the dark is to manually focus to something that's at least a third of the way into your scene, depending on what your f-stop's like. And then uh, you should have most of the scene in focus. What you're really interested in, in actually is the static things in the scene. So pick something that isn't moving, a building, corner or an edge, to give you something nice and sharp to focus on. And uh, focus on that and then just leave it on that. You don't need to worry about the light trails being in focus. You just want them to be uh, nice and sharp as well, which they should be. Let me just point out one other thing to you really want to underexpose your shots because what you're wanting to come through is the light trails, not necessarily the scene behind it. And your camera will try and expose for everything in that scene. Remember what it's trying to do, it's trying to make the scene mid-grey. You can't remember what that's about. I'll link to a video that explains it. But uh, let me show you the back of the camera and you'll see what I mean. So I've got this set now at about a 30th of a second f18. Actually my exposure metering from the camera's point of view is completely off the scale which is why it's flashing it's more than two stops under. Actually more like three to five stops under. Don't be scared of it being too dark because the things that you want to pick up just those real highlights the bright lights from the cars. One other final point is, when you're thinking about your compositions, don't forget to use your camera in portrait and landscape. You'll find that uh, some of the images lend themselves much better to portrait. You know, maybe think about what you're going to do with them at the end. If you want to put them on Instagram or something, then you might find that the uh, portrait orientation works much better for you. And you can do things like your know, composition bring the lines from your light trails right into the corners to give leading lines into your photos. And play around with a few different things and uh, have some fun. I hope you found that useful and it's got you started with your creative nighttime photography. And what you might find is to get more used to this, you'll want to blend the number of shots to make them more interesting. For example, here that I've done where I've actually uh, flipped one uh, shot to make it like a symmetrical shot and that's much made it a bit more of an interesting composition but that's for a, a more advanced video which uh, i'll maybe film for you later on if you're interested let me know in the comments in the meantime if you have enjoyed this video please uh, do give it a like and if you want to see some more subscribe to the channel but now in the meantime go out and practice those nighttime photo shoots they're a lot of fun easy to get some results if you're a little bit patient and you do a few practices it's just a matter of trial and error so go and enjoy yourselves i'll look forward to seeing you next time